Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us in this talk. So today I will be taking you on a journey that speaks of machine learning applied to subsurface geological and geophysical decision making. This is quite an important presentation given that we're in an era where data occur in very large volumes and we need to find a way to analyze it. So the purpose of the talk is not to eliminate the fundamental geological and geophysical analysis, but is to provide a tool to aid the analysis. So before we go further, I would like to define something which is big data because everyone speaks of big data. I just want to say that the mining and metals industry have been dealing with big data long before the commercial and technology industry started working on big data. And by big data, I mean the following. I'll describe this or summarize this in five Vs. The first one is that we have large volumes of data, so many samples that we collect, and sometimes it's so difficult to handle and visualize. The second one is mainly the velocity that we tend to find in this data, so it's the high rate of collection that we tend to see and is continuous as compared to other industries where they collect data once in a while. The other one is more of the variety, where we speak of data coming from different sources. So we'll have data coming from survey department, data coming from mining and geosciences. There's also a high variability of this data, meaning the acquisition changes during the project time and during the mining life cycle. And the last one is the veracity, where the data itself is various levels of accuracy. So some of it comes in qualitative formats, such as many of the geological observations, while some of it comes in quantitative formats, such as the chemical assays that we tend to have, including geophysical data. So to do this, it means that we are now living in a world where we need a new way of doing things. And as I have mentioned, mining and metals industry has dealt long time ago with big data. The only thing that we have to do is that now there's a growing toolbox of all the new emerging data-driven methodologies. And with this, we need a new approach to deal with geoscience data which needs to include the following. The first one is going to be the domain expertise. So we still need people who are fully trained as geophysicists and fully trained as geologists. The second one is more on the statistical modeling. The last one is more on the coding. And in between, that's where the solution lies. So for the purpose of this talk, I will use one case study, which is the Bushveld Igneous Complex located here in South Africa. And the main aim is to investigate how big data sets can be used for the prediction of many different attributes such as geological features. And in this case, I'll use a case study of potholes. So let's look at something here. Firstly, we need to come up with a method of some kind. The most prominent method that is more easily available but difficult to process is mainly seismic data. So the first one is that we need to come up with a method where we apply machine learning to seismic data to automatically identify these potholes. But the journey starts in the beginning where we do post-processing of the data that was acquired long time ago. And with this, it means we need to extract specific seismic attributes. And seismic attributes can be defined as any measure, uh, any measure of seismic data that helps us to visualize or to visually enhance and quantify features for the interpretation of specific features such as potholes. And to do this, we have to develop some sort of a methodology. And here I will quote my colleague, Musa Manzi, and, uh, and other colleagues who have worked on this methodology to extract key seismic attributes from older geological data. So the first one is mainly seismic data migration, uh, staking and migration. And this will be followed by more of importing the data into a suitable type of a format. And for this, we can use programs such as MATLAB. And after this stage, we have to go and compute these seismic attributes. So there's two methodologies that have been developed. Much of it have been uh, headed by two of my colleagues, uh, Michael Westgate and Musa Manzi. The first one is conventional based methods. The second one is non-conventional based methods. And both of them have their own advantages and disadvantages, which I will cover in part for this presentation. And after this stage, what we do is we go into the main categories that we need to look into. The first one is mainly tracing these attributes. And by this methodology, what we aim for, it's more effective at characterizing pothole profiles, as you can see in the left diagram. The second one is more of horizon attributes, where it is more effective at characterizing pothole expands, or including their diameters and shapes in different volumes. 
Let's look at another one here where we look again on reprocessing some of the seismic data. So you will notice on the diagrams that are shown in here that there is a time slice horizon that is depicted. And in there, this is where now we start extracting some of these key features that defines the potholes. And this may include things such as the side angles of the potholes, their diameters and so forth. And all these data sets tend to be quite useful for the prediction spatially of where the potholes may be located and their characteristics. And after this stage, what you see in here, it's a state-of-the-art type of mapping where we have sequentially picked up different potholes using geophysical seismic attributes that we have extracted. And from this data, this prepares our way to do detailed machine learning work. And on the bottom right there, you see a, a, a map which is more of a geophysical model extracted using some enhanced type of uh, algorithms that helps us to notice anomalies in a form of potholes and that map clearly detail that profile. As we move from that, now we have all our data set to start doing some machine learning. So what you're looking at here is a parallel coordinate system. For those who are doing geology and geochemistry, they will notice this as a typical spider diagram. But here it's more enhanced to look at many other things in different dimensions. So what you are looking at here is cluster analysis of different potholes. And you can see we have managed to pick from the seismic attributes up to five potholes of different sizes. But what we have to do next is to look at the following. In the left-hand side, you will notice that we can spatially now locate the different sizes of the potholes, but not only the potholes, the linear features such as the faults have been clearly been marked or demarcated. On the right-hand side, what you're looking at is using some of these key seismic attributes such as the diameter of the pothole, the side angle of the pothole, to make predictions of where are we likely to encounter what size of a pothole and what sort of dimension it will be looking like. To summarize what I have just presented in the previous slide, the Bushfell complex has generated enormous amount of data sets which provide us with insights. So the advent of modern seismic processing techniques and computing uh, technologies have enabled us to constantly extract key features such as the key characteristics for the potholes. So with this approach, it means we can plan ahead where to find the next pothole and what sort of dimensions will it be having and to also characterize what sort of depth, diameter, uh, the side angle, which are key excellent features that can be utilized in machine learning. So we have demonstrated this using agglo agglomerative type of clustering, which is a form of unsupervised machine learning algorithm. And to take this further, we're going to be using these learnings that I have presented here for the next phase of an AOK project 5.7, which looks at statistical learning for the prediction of potholes. Again, I would like to thank everyone for joining us.